when I think, uh, well, first of all, explain what NANOG is. A lot of our guests may not know. So the acronym is the North American Network Operators Group. Okay. And it is a collection of, of network engineers. These are the people who actually um, were part of the development of the whole infrastructure of the internet within, within North America. And the internet started in North America. So these, a lot of these people who are involved, what we call the gray beards. I mean, these were literally the, the, the founding fathers and I'll throw in there, founding mothers here and there. Um, and that's an area of diversity we'll talk about later in the conversation, hopefully. Um, we're, we're there who are part of just pulling this all together. And um, it all kind of sprung out of the original um, NSF uh, uh, grant to build the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, NANOG kind of sprung forth from there. First, it was part of Merit. Merit was, is, is part of the Un University of Michigan. And uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, NANOG spun out on its own to become an independent um, body. But um, these are people who were there at the very foundations of the, the growth of the internet within the United States and, and also North America. You know, when I, when I have conversations with non-technology people, even a lot of mm -hmm. people in the tech space that didn't come from, you know, the early days of the 80s and 90s, when not only were we learning about personal computers in a significant way, we we're also really learning about local area networking, wide mm -hmm. area networking, um, it's hard for people to imagine, but email, we all probably most of us ran some version of a Microsoft post office or oh, yeah. Apple's equivalent, all of that built all mm -hmm. that. And so we were heavily involved with bringing internet connectivity into our organizations. I worked for the University of Texas for about eight years. I remember when we had, I, I want to say our connectivity for our campus in Galveston was three T ones, no firewall, yeah. just wide open in the oh, yeah. early mid nineties. <clears throat> and, and so we grew up around this idea of, you know, watching the World Wide web develop and watch mm -hmm. browsers develop and search engines develop. People that are coming in the last 15 years, 10 years in particular, are sort of all in place. And so as you articulate the growth of the internet and the, the, the incredible changes that we've seen Mm -hmm. With I hate to say within my lifetime, because I don't want to sound like I was in a covered wagon uh, yeah. on my way to Donner Pass. Mm -hmm. But but really in 25 years, we've gone from text-based games on a desktop that really had no connectivity, eventually got a modem sure. to we're talking about 5G and satellite constellations and fiber. Mm -hmm. How do you help explain the growth of the internet and what those different errors are to people that are trying to learn about it? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll use a couple of ana analogies and you talk about in your lifetime, and this is something to make you feel a little bit better about yourself. I mean, it, when you when you think about the, the transition from the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk mm -hmm. to landing a man on the moon, um, that was less than a 70 year time span. So within mm -hmm. someone's lifespan, they could have been alive when the first, you know, little bait, and it was basically a, a glider, right. took off and flew a few feet till we landed a person on the moon. I mean, that's just, it's just mind boggling right. you know, that, that what could happen in that time span. So, I mean, if you look at the arc of technology, it's been, it's been ramping up like crazy to begin with. Um, but, but in terms of people's interaction with technology, and this is something that is in my role with Nanog that I am, that I have to kind of balance. Um, in the beginning, you have the early adopters on anything that you do. Then the early adopters really have to get their hands dirty. They have to understand the principles and the foundation of how something works at, in a very intimate level. Mm -hmm. But as that technology becomes um, commonplace uh, and mainstream, then the process of automation and simplification has to happen. For example, let's look at computers. When you look at um, when everyone, there was no you know, GUI operating system. Everyone interacted directly with it through um, the terminal to some mm -hmm. degree. Uh, but now that's obscured. So people using um, like Windows 10 or someone using the Mac, um, they never interact with the terminal. They, they, they plug it in, they play, it works. It becomes an appliance. 
Right. And so most people's interaction with the internet today is as appliance. It's invisible to them. They connect through, most people connect through Wi-Fi. They have no understanding how, how that network works, how, what's facilitating going on in the background for all that process to happen. Um, and so even from a standpoint of education, um, we were just, I was just in a call earlier and they were talking about the problems related to the aspect of colleges that actually teach network engineering. Um, that it's, it's all about writing that program that's gonna exist on the internet or writing that application, or, or writing that 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 new piece of hardware that's going to exist on the app, uh, on the internet, but not that really thought of who's minding that internet, who is developing and maintaining that internet. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 internet is is really the fiber of a modern society. I mean, could you imagine if suddenly the internet stopped tomorrow? I mean, even at your homes, when I'm sure with your your kids or whatever family members. Yeah. Let the Wi-Fi, let the internet go down, and people, what? I can't do anything. I can't watch the TV. The only time I can get my kids to talk to me, and I'm not going to confess that I may walk over to the router and unplug it on occasion, <laughs> just yeah. to have a father-daughter conversation. But in case they're listening, yeah. But it has gone down on an occasion. Sure. I mean, the worst punishment you can say to your kids: I'm going to take your phone away from you, or yeah. I'm going to, um, you know, block you from internet access right. because you're literally cutting them off from the world. And again, this is where I'm pushing back to saying that the internet is the very fiber of, of, a, of a modern um, um, society that we live in. And which also puts into one of my little kind of my, my, my little soapbox, soapbox, soapboxes as an executive director. And that is the fact that there are still people in North America, the most advanced, you know, connected society in certain ways who don't have adequate internet access. Um, and it's 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 a shame because so much relies upon it in the society that we live in. Hey, this is David McCall with the QTS Experience. If you enjoy this conversation, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. See you next time.